So many different comics and so many different collected editions. Today I'm going to be answering a question that I get asked so often, and that is, what are the different types of comic book collected editions? So, stay tuned. Welcome back everybody. Before getting started, don't forget to check out our Patreon. It's an amazing way to support the channel if you can do so. And I couldn't do videos like this without all the wonderful patrons. Here is a question I get asked often. What's the difference between an omnibus and an absolute edition? What's the difference between an oversized hardcover? So today I'm going to cover a lot of those answers. So today we're going to be looking at different collected editions for comics. Now some of these lines have been discontinued and I will let you know which lines have been discontinued and which ones are still going. So, you know, if you're out there at a comic book shop or a flea market or a yard sale or on eBay, you know which lines are discontinued. And if you're wondering about manga, I will be doing a separate video for manga at another time in the different types of collected editions for manga that are available here in America. Now, I've done a video on the different terminology of collected editions, if you want to check that out. And this may seem like a beginner's video, but I think it's okay for everybody to get a refresher course. So let's start with the basics. So, of course, we're kicking it off with the basics, and that is the floppies, the single issues. So these are just monthly comic books that come out once a month or twice a month and when a few of these are bundled up together four or five issues six issues we get trade paperbacks both DC and Marvel and just about every publisher gives us these these are the same dimensions as a comic book except you get about six issues collected in here about five or six issues collected in in here that is your standard trade paperback now there's also standard size hardcovers. Now you've probably heard me use the term before on the channel. A standard size hardcover released by both companies Marvel and DC as well as independent companies. And whenever I say standard size hardcover, I'm talking about these uh, trim sizes. It is the same dimensions as a comic book. It just looks a little bit bigger than your trade paperback because it is a hardcover. But believe it or not, this is the exact same page size as this. And that is, of course, when I'm talking about a standard size hardcover. Now, from here, we get the oversized hardcovers or the deluxe edition. So anytime I say oversized hardcover or deluxe edition hardcover, I'm talking about these trim sizes. And these are taller than your standard size hardcovers and your trade paperbacks. So meaning the artwork is oversized. So that's what I mean when I say oversized hardcover. Now, usually you get about, like I said, five to six issues, sometimes four issues collected in these uh, standard size trade paperbacks or trade paperbacks. In these oversized hardcovers, you usually get about 10 to 12 comics collected in here. So they're a little bit thicker, which leads us to the Omnibus Editions, which is my favorite format, which I'm sure led a lot of you to the channel. And these are, of course, as tall as the oversized hardcovers, deluxe editions, but obviously a lot wider because these collect so much more. Sometimes these collect 30 to 40 to 50 issues. Sometimes in the crazy case of something like Devil Dinosaur, which only collects eight issues. So... This standard size hardcover collects the first six issues of the Justice League New 52. This oversized hardcover collects the first 12. And this omnibus collects the first 23 plus a bunch of other stuff, which is about 50 issues in here. Of course, omnibus editions, like I was talking about the Devil Dinosaur, vary in the thickness because sometimes they collect 10 to 15 issues. Whether it's marked an oversized hardcover or an omnibus, well, that's really up to the publisher. But, for example, here it is next to Amazing Fantasy, this Jonathan Hickman Omnibus Volume 1 of Avengers. And in the other case, sometimes the oversized hardcovers are thicker than the Marvel Omnibus, such as the case of this oversized hardcover of X-Men Fall of the Mutants. And if you're asking yourself, am I throwing hints out there for people? Of course, that's what I do. If you remember the first time I did this about three years ago, I was throwing a hint at Annihilation uh, Omnibus reprint. But anyway, let's keep going. So let's go back to DC, because DC has a bigger format than the Omnibus format. They have something called the Absolute Format, so this is the difference between an Omnibus and an Absolute Format. Keep in mind, the Absolute Formats come in their own slipcase, and sometimes they have a dust jacket, like so, with this copy of Justice. But here, lately, most of them don't have a dust jacket. So here are both books outside of their slipcase boxes 
compared to the size of an omnibus to kind of give you an idea. And of course, price being one of the biggest factor in the differences, the trade paperbacks are usually $9.99 all the way up to $20. Standard size hardcovers are usually anywhere from $20 to $30. Oversized hardcovers or deluxe editions are usually anywhere from $35, $30, all the way up to $100, depending on how thick they are or how much they contain. But I did want to do a size comparison of an absolute to a omnibus edition. Now Marvel has its own lines of bigger books. Here we have the gallery edition and a treasury edition compared to the size of an omnibus. These are a little bit taller and of course longer than your omnibus editions. The gallery editions are a little bit longer than the treasury editions. The gallery editions are in hardcover format while the treasury editions have this soft cover. It's not really, really soft like your trade paperbacks has this nice feel to it and I've done overviews of both on the channel if you want to check them out but there's no dust jacket on the gallery edition but I did want to point these out and of course compare it to the size of a monster edition now of course the monster editions are a hundred to hundred and fifty dollars the gallery editions are anywhere from $25, $30, $35 to $40, and the treasury editions are anywhere from $25 to $35. There was another edition called the Platinum Edition or the Adamantium Edition for Wolverine, but that line has been discontinued and I don't have those with me. Those are a little taller than your absolutes, but these are the lines that they are continuing, so I did want to show these big books off. Before we go any further and move on to other editions, I did want to go back to the granddaddy, or let's just call it the father, I don't want to feel that old. The father of all the collected editions for Marvel was the Marvel Masterworks. This line started in the 80s and has continued all the way up until today, present day, and we have some coming out in 2022. So there is no stopping this line. This is the first line that introduced us to collected editions if you were a Marvel fan, uh, as far as restoration of artwork or having a nice hardcover with a dust jacket. So if you could tell, this has a volume 308 right there, which means they've been continuing the line since volume one, volume one being Amazing Spider-Man uh, Marvel Masterwork number one. And this is the direct market cover and there are two covers and I've talked about direct market covers and the standard edition covers on my terminology for beginners. But I did want to bring this up. Now DC had their own version of this and it was called the DC Archives. Sadly, that line has been discontinued. They're, they don't make any more DC Archives anymore. But they were pretty much the same thing as the Marvel Masterworks. It was just classic stories from the Golden Age, Silver Age, and some from the Bronze Age. Now we're getting into the whew, modern age, uh, but of classic DC and Marvel heroes. Now, one of the big questions I get all the time about these Marvel Masterworks, because these range anywhere from $75 to $100, and that's mainly due to the art restoration. That's where most of the money goes. But be, these basically, I mean, if you look here, this has... Issue 201 to 209 of Uncanny X-Men as well as Longshot 1 through 6. Not a lot of issues. And it's the dimensions of a trade paperback or an oversized hardcover. So they're not oversized like the oversized hardcovers or the omnibus editions. Now recently, Marvel introduced this line right here. And this is the Mighty Marvel Masterworks line. So this is more geared towards kids, but I think anybody can read it. I say kids because the older I get, the harder it is to read smaller font. But this is basically the hardcovers coming out in a smaller format. These are not $75 to $100. These are $15.99. And we already have Amazing Spider-Man Volume 1, X-Men Volume 1, Fantastic Four Volume 1, and we're getting Volume 2s of these series later on this year and early in 2022. So this is a great way to introduce the next generation to these great characters. Now, the dimensions of this book is not alone to this Mighty Marvel Masterworks. We've also had these GN lines, or the graphic novel lines, so they're the same dimensions. To kind of give you an idea, I'll hold it up next to a standard size trade paperback. So we have the GN line. And I say some of these are geared towards kids, but really anybody can pick them up. They're a lot cheaper. These range anywhere from $9.99 to $20. And lately they've had these right here. These are really cool. This is the Marvel Verse line. Again, the same height and trim size 
as the GN and the Mighty Marvel Masterworks, except this is a lot less thicker. This line is used to introduce people to the character. So they just pick random stories throughout the years featuring these characters. We've had some for uh, Black Widow. We've had some for Wolverine, Spider-Man, and now we have one for Shang-Chi. So mainly it's when a movie comes out that they do this, introducing readers, new readers, or even old readers that have been reading comics but have never read an issue of Master Kung Fu to these characters. And this line is $9.99. So while I have this up, and I mentioned the discontinued DC archives, I did want to talk about some lines that have been discontinued from both Marvel and DC. I've been holding this up a lot, and this is a Marvel premiere edition. This usually came out about three to six months before the trade paperback version of this. Now this line, Marvel premiere, is a standard size hardcover, has been discontinued. And I also held this up. This is a Cable and X-Force classic, and the classic line has been discontinued. These have been replaced by the complete collections and the epic collections. So no longer does Marvel publish the uh, classic line. I think there was a New Warriors classic line. There were some X-Men classics, Excalibur classics, Hulk classics. Pretty much most of their characters, but that line has now been discontinued. Along with the classics, there's also the Marvel Visionaries that are no longer in existence. And these usually focused on some of the creator-centric books, like the McFarlane Spider-Man run or the Peter David run. These have been replaced eventually by the Epic line or the complete collections. Now, some of the discontinued books I get often asked about are the Marvel Essential books and the DC Showcase books. So both of these were really cheap ways of collecting comics. This, <laughs> this had about 17 to 20 issues in here, but as you can tell, everything is in black and white. Same thing with the Marvel version of this, the Marvel Essentials. They've done essentials of just about every character and had multiple volumes and the lines were discontinued and i know a lot of my viewers have asked me about this particular line because these were cheap these were 15 to 20 dollars and a lot of them are out of print now and I, yeah this is a line that marvel doesn't want to bring back i don't know about dc if dc will ever bring back but these were like phone books black and white versions of the comics that originally came out over 500 pages and both of these were $17, but like I said, both lines are discontinued and replaced by either Omnis or Epics or Complete Collections. So you've heard me talk about the Complete Collections and the Epic line because of the cancellation of the Classics or the Marvel Premiere or the Visionaries. This is what takes its place. And I've done a whole video on what is the Marvel Epic line. And think of the Complete Collections as a modern version of the Epic Collections. The Epic Collections are classic Marvel stories that are released in non-chronological order, but we have huge runs of characters of Thor, Captain America, Iron Man, just to name a few. But they do have a stopping point eventually. There will be a final volume to the Epic Collection until, I guess, 10 years when they continue the line with future volumes. But later on comes the Complete Collection. So, for example, this is the final volume of Fantastic Four in Epic Collection. And this is the next volume, of course, skipping the Heroes Reborn, but if you want to read that, enter at your own risk, of the Complete Collection. So this is not an epic collection. This happens after Onslaught. So in between this is Onslaught and the Heroes Reborn Fantastic Four. And that's why I've said for a long time that I think Onslaught is the stopping point for final epic collections. But there are some exceptions, like Wolverine, uh, because it continues past the Onslaught years. And... We are getting some epic collections of 90s characters like Deadpool and Venom. While I have some of these books up here, I did want to talk about the Marvel Select line because it's a standard size hardcover line. Um, it is pretty much the definitive story of one character. So th they chose Thanos Rising for the character of Thanos. Uh, they chose the Astonishing X-Men story Gifted for the X-Men to represent the X-Men. So it's the editor's choice, and they're only releasing one of each. So it's really a line that has a finish, but it is they are still out there, and they're still publishing them. And that's the Marvel Select line. There's no dust jacket on them or anything, but you'll, you'll see the big Marvel Select edition here on the spine. The character... I'm sorry, the story and then the creators down there. So going back to the trade paperbacks, this is your standard trim size for a trade paperback from just about every publisher. 
However, I did want to point out and bring up TKO books. Because TKO books, while they are soft covers, their dimensions are a little bit bigger than your standard size trade paperbacks. So they want it to stand out a little more. I love TKO books. I love the fact that they publish six issues and the trade paperback, as well as digital issues and a slipcase all on the same day. So they're great publishers. And I love the fact that they do want to stand out above just Marvel, DC, Image, uh, IDW, and do their books in their own format. While that probably gets on a lot of people's nerves uh, because it's a different size and where do you do keep them all together. Uh, they're not hardcovers, but I think that's pretty cool. It's a cool way to uh, make them stand out. Now, there are other companies that have done absolute size or books in slipcase editions, but they don't call them absolutes, such as this is the definitive edition of The Boys Volume 1. It comes in a slipcase, and if you look at the size, it is the exact same height as an absolute edition in the box. And when you take the book out, it's the same dimensions as this particular absolute edition. And Dark Horse has also done the slip cases with Umbrella Academy. This is the true lives of the fabulous Killjoys. And if you compare it to an absolute edition, it falls just a little bit shorter than the definitive boys and absolute editions. Now this definitive line has been discontinued sadly, but we're trying to get omnibus editions of the boys printed. So while I do have the absolute edition and you've seen it compared to the size of standard size hardcovers and omnibus editions, let's compare it to the size of other publishers big books. Image has been releasing deluxe editions, hardcovers, they hardly ever have a dust jacket on them and these hardcovers are as tall as an omnibus edition. However, they're all different trim sizes because while this is East of West, the Apocalypse Year One, here we have Deadly Class. And Deadly Class, this edition is just called a hardcover edition. It's not library edition or anything like that, is a lot bigger, as you can tell. So people ask me, like, how do I know if it's gonna be oversized? How do I know if it's gonna be bigger? <laughs> this is all honesty. I don't either sometimes. I look on Amazon for the trim sizes or on PRH or the Hachette catalog and sometimes the, the trim sizes are off. So I tell people to wait until I get a copy and do a size comparison of how big these books are. Because we have different publishers with different trim sizes here we have for example the Mighty Morphin Power Rangers Year 1 Deluxe Edition. Even though it says Deluxe Edition it's still a little bit bigger than this hardcover right here, which which was as tall as an omnibus. So that tells you how much taller that year one deluxe edition is from Boom Studios. It's not the case every time, but I did want to bring up the fact that sometimes you just, there's no way of telling how big these books are until you see it visually at a store, or unless you got some guy on YouTube making videos about the different collected editions. Because then we get into the Dark Horse Library Editions. And the Dark Horse Library Editions are also just a little different in sizes sometimes. But most of the time, they all look like this. They're this height right here. As tall as this Deadly Class. As tall as, almost as tall, sorry, as an Absolute Edition. Sometimes they come with dust jackets, like the case of Harrow County Library Edition, which I hope they keep reprinting. They reprinted Volume 1, but they cancel Volume 2 and 3 reprints but let's just hope that they bring it back. And then sometimes they don't have dust jackets like the case of Hellboy. And if you can tell that Hellboy Library Edition isn't as tall as the Harrow County Library Edition, but it is longer. So see what I mean? Even within the same publisher, the dimensions are different, varying per book. Just want to point out the IDW collections are some of my favorites, mainly because they come with a ribbon. Okay, not mainly, but they're just beautiful books. They have stayed the same dimension, both uh, this, Transformers, and uh, G.I. Joe, even though that's discontinued now, and Sonic have been the same dimensions in this trim size of these deluxe editions with no dust jacket and beautiful designs on the spines. And then we get to the crazy big books. So here we have the Colossal Conan. This is from Dark Horse. It's a huge book. I mean, this is one of my favorite uh, omnibus editions I own, even though it's not an omnibus, because it is bigger than your omnibus size. Now, this size gets ridiculous for a lot of people, and I get it. It's a mess to try to read. Even I've had issues, and I love big books. Thicker than a snicker, baby. But uh, yeah, it's a little uncomfortable to read at times. 
Sin City was also released in this format, but Dark Horse isn't the only one that's released big books like this. We've also had books that tall from Dynamite. This is the complete Gail Simone Red Sonia, which if you've not read, it's a freaking awesome book. As you can tell, it's the height of this Conan, Colossal Conan, but obviously not as thick because it doesn't contain as many issues. And again, compared to the size of an omnibus. And you can't really tell because this is called the complete Gail Simone Red Sonia Omnibus. So sometimes that's one thing I've seen that publishers use the word omnibus and it doesn't necessarily mean omnibus. And we'll get to there here in a second because we need to talk about one more book that is crazy in size. And yes, there are other publishers that have released bigger books like the freaking Little Nemo, but that's just one offs here and there. But the Six Gun, Oni Press released this, Letter 44, and there's another collection that they have that is this format. The biggest gripes I've heard about these formats here is that they don't fit in a Kalax. So people have to get crafty and just get creative with the way they put them inside of bookcases. So as you can tell, it's taller than any of these editions. But there's not that many of these type of books out there. But I did want to point it out when people have asked me, how tall are the Six Guns? And they're bigger in their slip cases too. And how tall is letter 44? Uh, how tall is the Parker edition? So there, it's about that height. Now I thought about this part really hard because I didn't want to confuse people, but I feel like I have to let people know because people come here to ask me questions and to find out things like this. But you have to be careful whenever you see a publisher use the word omnibus that is not Marvel, who started the omnibus line, and DC, who has now followed suit with Marvel's trim size. So when you see a Marvel Omnibus or a DC Omnibus, these are the exact same dimensions. The thickness of course varies because it depends on how much each of the Omnis collect in them. But in the case of the complete Gail Simone Red Sonia, like I was saying, this is an Omnibus edition and as you can tell it's taller and longer than your standard Omnibus edition. However, IDW also released these omnibus books called Transformers Beast Wars. And when I was first starting to get into collected editions, I got so excited about owning these books. Uh, there's a bunch of Transformers released this way. But as you can tell, this is a soft cover and the trim size is like one of those Marvel graphic novel books that I showed off earlier, the size of a manga. And I got so excited because I thought I was going to be getting this. And they're not the only ones. They're, they're still doing it. Uh, for example, this is from Boom Studios, known as an omnibus, and this is the incorruptible omnibus. As you can tell, it's a soft cover. The word omnibus really throws off a lot of people because a lot of people come to expect hardcovers. So either, like I mentioned, look in the description of the book that's being sold through uh, cheap graphic novels, in stock trades, or Amazon, Barnes & Noble, wherever you're buying your books, or just watch videos like this for overviews of books. I do overviews of different types of books. I'm not just limiting myself to omnibus editions as much as I love them. I love reading even more. So recently though, we've had something called compendiums come back. These were discontinued for a while from several publishers, mainly because they're soft covers. And the problem with soft covers, whenever you have these many pages is that they're glued binding. So eventually there, there will be a crease in the middle. However, I haven't heard from anybody complaining about any of the new books um, that have had a crease and that book fell. But anyway, compendiums have come back. So they're soft cover editions, collecting just as many issues as an omnibus, sometimes more. And it's not just DC bringing it back, Image Comics bringing it back. Uh, they're the ones that actually the first time I got a compendium was from an image comic. It was the Witchblade and the Darkness compendiums. So they are they have brought them back. And like I said, the only thing you have to be careful with these is, you know, the creasing in the middle. Now, of course, the prices on these are a lot different. These are $40 to $60 compared to $100 to $125 for the Omnibus editions. But here's the size difference. But one more thing to throw a wrench in there is that IDW, the same company that used the word Omnibus for that Beast Wars book you saw earlier, that Transformers Beast Wars book, is also using the word Compendium now for the lock and key. And as you can tell, it's the same height and thickness as a Marvel and DC Omnibus. So this one confused me. Because people kept asking me, what's what's the compendium going to be? Is it going to be standard size or is it going to be a soft cover? No, it's an omnibus, but just they're calling it a compendium. 
So that kind of throws a wrench in there to the whole compendium idea. But, you know, it's not the first time we've seen compendiums in hardcover. Like, they've done limited editions of Witchblade and Darkness and also Invincible. But it's the first time we've seen the word compendium used for oversized artwork. And I think that's it. I mean, I've covered everything except for the artist books and I've went over to the discontinued lines. But that, as they say, is that. If you're interested in any of these formats, don't forget to check out our sponsor. This episode is sponsored by CheapGraphicNovels.com, your online home for brand new graphic novels and collected editions up to 50% off cover price. They pride themselves on packaging your books so they arrive safely in an excellent condition as well as prompt and helpful service. Check out the bargain deals for up to 90% off cover price. CGN is excited to announce that they are now taking pre-orders. They're making it easier for you to ensure that you don't miss out on the hottest releases. CGN is currently running a special promotion for your mentees. If you're a first time customer, let them know that you were referred by near mint condition at the checkout and you'll receive a credit for free shipping on your next order. This promotion is valid for U.S. customers only. Cheap Graphic Novels, your source for the hottest books with a kind of deep discount and quality shipping and customer service that will keep you coming back for more. And those were the collected... And those were the different types of collected editions. Let me know in the comments down below which one is your favorite type of collected edition. For me, I have to go with the Omnibus. I'm a big fan of thicker than a snicker books, so that's the route that I go. But I would love to know what your favorite type of collected editions are. Are you a fan of the trade paperbacks, the epic collections, the deluxe editions, oversized hardcovers, the big huge monster books? Leave those comments down below and if you have any more questions, if I skipped over something, please also leave Leave that down below again this was the uncanny omar thank you all so much for watching check out our patreon and our spread shop phenomenal ways to support the channel if you can do so and more importantly everyone please stay healthy and stay safe out there much love